to talk some trash. No, uh, listen. Uh, there's a lot of Hi. there's a lot going back and forth. I'm here with my segment producer, my wife, Larice. Uh, she might be commenting down below and uh, help me stay on track. And if she, while I'm ranting and raving, she's on the computer, able to search some things. If anybody asks about something, she's able to do the uh, help me with some details and feed me some details from uh, articles and whatnot. But uh, I want to talk a little bit about this whole deplorable hashtag deplorables. Hillary Clinton, a couple weeks ago now, said half of Donald Trump's people, supporters, are deplorable, right? Half of his people are racist, bigoted, anti-Semitic, homophobic, sexist, deplorable. Um, I, like to, I don't like the word deplorable. I like to say the a-holes and the morons of the world. Um, and in my comedy routine, I have a whole bunch of stuff about a-holes and morons. And I talk about a-holes and morons are in every community to hold an entire race hostage because of one asshole or one idiot. Um, you got to deal with those a-holes and morons on individual basis. That's how I believe. Now, the problem is, Hillary said, half of Donald Trump supporters are deplorable. I'm not saying she's wrong. I'm saying saying half is clearly not a scientifically proven polled number. Uh, that being said, they say 68% of South Carolinian supporters um, believe such and such a thing, uh, believe uh, we should mass deport uh, a certain number percentage. And they were focused on South Carolina because that's like one of those classic, uh, always going to be for Trump over Hil Hillary Clinton probably, right? Hey, Democrat for Trump here. Yay. Um, I'm idealistically centric for Hillary, but that's okay. It's okay. I get it. I'm, I'm proud and I, I like all opinions and I'm not thinking anybody's deplorable because they want to vote for Trump. But here's the problem. There are deplorable people in our society. There are people that have been taught to hate and fear by their family, by their church, by their friends, by their community, right? They've learned hate and fear, which comes out in the way, in, in the form of racism, in the form of uh, homophobia in the form of sexism, whatever. Not that men are fearing women, they're fearing empowered women for sure. They're, you know, emasculated because of their own ego and insecurity. You know, they're afraid. They have families that they're afraid if they lose their job, right? And then when they lose their job or something goes on, it's everybody else's fault. It's human, it's what happens. Uh, most people, it's a learned behavior. For some of you, you actually have been hurt by someone and that has turned into, you know, one black guy stole your wallet or God forbid, you know, pulled a gun on you, stabbed you, blah, 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 raped, whatever. And you hold the entire race accountable, right? Or more, but more, most people that happened to somebody you know or heard about it happening to someone you know. And I want to get to the point where what is it? But is it just as bad to look the other way? I'm never saying look the other way. No, no, no. For that individual, that individual, or if it's a gang, that group, right? The specific offenders held accountable every single time, you know, equally, not all bankers are evil, but the shitheads at Wells Fargo need to be in jail, right? But hey, we're not going to hate all bankers. We, it's, we can't hate everybody on Wall Street, right? How often do we just hear, Wall Street is evil? That's not true. Individuals on Wall Street take advantage of the situation, right? From all angles, we hold an entire group of people accountable because one or a few a-holes and morons, right? They choose ignorance and we all fail because of it. They let the whole team down because they chose to be lazy or ignorant, right? That one individual. And so we have to hold everybody accountable. A guy uh, was turned down by two or three gals for dates or sex or whatever. So he has to hate and be a sexist pig to all women, right? I'm not saying this happens all the time, but this happens too often. Uh, one person now is afraid to walk down a street because there's a black guy down there and he may pull a gun on me. He may stab me. He may try to rape me. 
and we live in fear because of it. Because of something that may have happened to us, or like I said, more often than not, something that happened to a family member, a friend, or something you heard happened to somebody at some time, that's where we're at. And what happens is they lump together. Trump needs to be held accountable. Right, I'm gonna to get to that. I'm gonna to get to that. Um, now, the other problem with Hillary Clinton's statement along those lines, the other problem with Hillary Clinton's statement by saying, talking about his supporters are deplorable, is we're holding them accountable for all the deplorable shit that Trump has said and done, right? We can go down the list, the wall, you know, all immigrants, you know, he eventually corrected himself. Somebody said, yeah, he did say it's the criminal illegals that need, that have done such, you know, that have raped. There are some illegals that have raped, but at some point he was making these blanket statements about all legal immigrants because so many of them are racist and so many of them are, are racist rapists. So many of them are killers. So many of them are drug dealers that we need to treat every single one of them like a criminal. That's kind of, that's kind of what he has said at many times, right? He has corrected himself or more to the point, his talking heads have said, no, what he really meant was, you know, the people that do murder, rape and sell drugs need to be sent back. But at times, and many people, Ann Coulter in her own book said, the only thing we couldn't forgive Trump on at this point is if he softened on deportating, deport, deporting everybody, right? Mass deportation, what Trump has promised us is the only thing that we could not forgive him. If he softens on mass deportation, we can't support Trump. And then like two days after her book came out, um, I'm softening. And then a day later, he's hardening. Then he's softening, he's hardening, he's softening, he's hardening, right? It's, dee, 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 dee. It, it's all over the place, right? Uh, Trump's like ideals need Viagra, right? That's pretty much what we're saying here. Trump needs Viagra for his uh, mind. I don't know if something exists uh, for his stance on all these different things. He's not a flip-flopper. He's like, beep, 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 beep. He's he, he, like... He's so back and forth, flip-flop does it. He's because he has no idealistic center. He's all over the map because nothing he says can be taken as fact. Nothing he says can be taken as truth. Nothing he says can be taken as intention because he changes what he says daily. And then he gets upset and defensive and calls people nasty names and mean because they hold him accountable for the shit he says. He says, I change what I say every day. You can't hold that accountable. You can't hold me accountable for saying X, Y, Z because I said ABC the next day. He's an egomaniac, but he's more a narcissist and a sociopath, right? So going forward, I would love to see Trump, as well as all of the deplorables, right? I would love to see deplorable in chief become a little more self-reflective, take an acting class, take an improv comedy class, learn how to listen, learn how to say, oh, maybe I'm not right. Now, that's different than saying, oh shit, I don't know anything, I'm afraid. Uh, you're like, no, it's before you go out and just say shit, have some sort of process that goes through, maybe what I'm saying is shit, right? Maybe what I'm saying is total bullshit. Now, Trump admits what he says total bullshit, you know, most of the time, right? Or he denies what he says at all. He denies I said anything, right? Shitty, shitty, shitty. Is that a Trump emoji? Those are babies. Oh, shitty babies. All right. Well, I don't know what we're saying by saying shitty babies. That, that's a shitty baby. What? Don't blame the babies. No, but he's a baby. <laughs> I know. Well, he's a baby head. He is a big baby head. Trump is a big baby head. And... Pretty much the whole Miss Universe thing would have gone away by now if he didn't every day have to go on and defend him. Because no one has yet say, oh, you're right, Mr. Trump. So he goes on and got on every day to Fox and saying, you know, she was wrong about Miss America. She was wrong about this. She's being so mean. <laughs> and he just has to keep bringing it up and then wonder why everybody's talking about it. Nobody's talking about it. We don't give a shit but you keep talking about it. You're the one that makes it so easy. 
You treat, you tweet about it. You wake up at three in the morning because you can't sleep because not everybody likes me. <laughs> I heard my daddy who was such an asshole and taught me how to be an asshole back to tell me I'm okay. Sorry, Donald, you're not always a winner because you know what? Nobody is a winner all the time. Everyone in real life has challenges and sometimes they overcome those challenges, sometimes they don't. Everyone in life is faced with things that need a team to overcome them. You can't do president on your own. At some point, you're gonna to have to have a cabinet in there because clearly you don't know shit and you need to have better people around you that will help you process so that when you go out and say bullshit, at least it's a little more educated Right? It's like you're just throwing shit at a dartboard and missing the whole board. You know, maybe you can at least get in like on right the inner circle or even the outer circle. At least hit the board. At least hit the right wall. Like you're throwing a dartboard that's this way and you're hitting the wall back there somewhere. Like you're just completely missing the mark. Facts, truth are so slanted and you're getting away with it because of your deplorable followers are so passionate saying, yeah, he's right. Oh my God, he's taking on DC. Oh my God, he's telling crooked Hillary where to go and how to get there. Actually, you're not, you're not saying shit. And the people are just so thick skinned. It's not half, it's probably about 20% of your what followers. About the supporters? You so the supporters, are they deplorable? Some are. But is it okay to say, uh, you're going to support him and look the other way when he makes these racist comments. Well, yeah. Comments. Well, what, that's that's the bigger problem. We have tw a, a certain percentage of supporters that are completely deplorable um, for whatever reason. Racist, sexist, homophobic, anti-Semitic, whatever. They hate everything that isn't their waspy little shit, right? And they blame everybody else when they have an issue. And that's, you know, what we, we, can, we can go into what racism is all about, what all that, right, what bigotry is all about. So, but then there's all these people, I don't know if they're defending him, they're, they're looking the other way because their own 401k may or may not, they think their own 401k, their finances will be better off, right? Take, let's think of the, uh, the CEO from Wells Fargo who made $200 million after firing 5,000 people. Right. If Hillary becomes president, Elizabeth Warren probably have a better chance of getting her way and putting total douchebags like him and Trump in their place will force them to be a better members of society, which means not ripping people off, which means you have to pay people what you owe them. Right. Go right down the line. You're going to have to participate in society. and pay when you don't. You're gonna to have to pay money when you steal. More than just a fine, more than fighting CEO from Wells Fargo $4 million when he made $200 million after forcing 5,000 people to lose their job for shit they were told to do by you and your people and all the bank customers that lost millions of dollars in fines and fees how many of you, I don't know how many of you out there ever um, run close to zero in your bank account, in your checking account. I know as an actor, I'm, I'm flirting with disaster daily. I chose the career I chose. I'm not complaining about it. I love my life. I chose a life that isn't about making money. It's about creating and doing and, and experience, not things, right? I chose a life that I knew was not gonna be a high profit margin life. So I know what it is to live at that zero mark, to be in fear of going in the red daily. But I also know that I can't afford to be poor because when I go $2 below zero, I get charged 35. And then those fees, one or two of those fees, make it so the next thing bounces because I missed $2 and I've spent, lost 
thousands of dollars in bank fees, penalties, over the year, mostly because I don't have a lot of money. Point blank. I don't want the whole world to know that I'm uh, as successful as I think I am as an actor. I have supported myself without working as a waiter in an office, putting shoes on stinky feet or anything else, strictly as a performer or a producer of my own shows, yada, 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 I've survived. I've stayed off the street without having to carry a tray for 12 years now. Very proud of that fact. But I'm not rich. I'm not living on the street. I don't have any kids. If I had kids, I don't think I could do what I do. You know, blah, 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 blah. But no one, you can't afford to be poor anymore, right? You can't afford it. <coughs> there are tax breaks. If you make less than ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, if you don't make a lot of money, there's all kinds of tax breaks, you know, you are not paying taxes at all, and blah, 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 blah. I know people that are making millions of dollars are bitching and moaning that so-and-so is making food stamps and they don't pay taxes. You know, let, let, we can go into why they need food stamps. We can go into why they're poor all kinds of choices. I don't complain. I've never taken a food stamp. I've never taken a uh, unemployment benefit. I've never taken anything from the government. I deplore some people. I know actors. I deplore. When they go get a job for three months, instead of getting a job at Starbucks or instead of getting a job at Applebee's, they go collect unemployment because they don't want to work. They, they're happy to wait six months for the next acting job to come along. As far as I'm concerned, it is a privilege to live and work as an artist. I am so blessed that I can make a living doing what I do. I, if I, I could go get a job at Starbucks and pay the bills in between acting jobs if I needed it, because I used to wait tables all the time. I got rid of all my overhead costs. I made it so I could afford, for the most part, to live as an artist. I got rid of my love of things. Never had it. I was more of an experienced guy anyway. but. I get to experience this wonderful thing called acting and comedy almost daily on stage in rehearsal. I have, am friends with some amazing people. So I, I feel blessed. I don't take advantage of the system ever, ever. Maybe some people do. But the problem is, again, we, we, we one or two people do, so we think all of them are deplorable. I'm going all over the place right now, To be, to, I, I admit it. The problem is no one person has all the answers. No one person, you know, too many opinions are being presented as facts and truth. And when, as a result, I said many, many times in 1980, uh, my civics teacher, 84, 85, 86, whatever it was, ninth grade, civics teacher said, the problem is we're polarized. Two will left, two right. And 30 years since, it's worse. Until we stop just yelling at each other, until we start listening, it's not gonna get better. Donald Trump, you need to start fucking listening to somebody because two thing, one or two things is going to happen. More likely, you're not going to be our next president because you never listen. Second, you become our next president and you destroy this country because you never listen, right? One or two things are going to happen. And either way, it's not good for you. So if you start listening, I'm not saying you have to do what anybody else tells you to do, but you need to be a better listener. You need to, you know, when everyone is saying something, it might not, it, it might not be you. I hate that thing where everybody says, oh, the whole world's against me. No, I'm not talking about that ego and insecurity shit that, you know, that our mind is, is spinning uh, us into depression, right? No, I'm talking about when the whole world really is saying something other than the deplorable 20%. It's not happening, it's happened, about 20%. I might be wrong, not scientific number. When the whole world is telling you something, there may be some truth to it. I'm not saying you need to change anything. I'm just begging you to self-reflect and think a little deeper about the shit you say and the people you are hurting just by your rhetoric and the world you are destroying just with your rhetoric and the assholes and morons you're giving voice to simply with your rhetoric. We need in our lives to conquer the assholes and morons, not give them a platform. We need to give them a place to come to the table, not a place to scream louder from the left and right. You are making it worse, not better. Hey guys, check it out. We're gonna be here daily, 
Alternating Periscope Facebook. I got my segment producer, Larice. Give it up for Larice. Yay, nice job. And we'll see you soon, guys. Talk to you soon.